Hey, welcome in everybody to the Sports Fanatic News Hockey Show as this is the next edition of the Grittiest Take as we're here to talk about more Flyers defenseman trade talk like we were doing yesterday. Uh, I did myself with the Scotia North Division and we did yesterday with the Discover Central Division laying out teams that we think could trade defensemen from the perspective of who could help the Flyers from that team. Again, it's not us saying we're in love with that individual and think they're the best target. Like in my example, in my North Division, Erica Branson is not one of my top targets. I was just saying if you're trading with Ottawa, yeah, yeah. you would probably look at if you called and had that back and forth conversation. So that's just an example there. But we're going to get into the Honda West Division and go into what defensemen we think the Flyers could look at. But first and foremost, Steele, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing really well, man. Uh, every day uh, it gets better. So doing well. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always grateful to talk about hockey, especially Flyers hockey. And I'm always grateful to talk about Flyers hockey and how we can make the team better or how we feel that we could make the team better or suggestions that we could do as far as, you know, to get this team on the winning track and get us into where we need to be, which is the playoffs. Yeah, and also while we're on the topic of the Honda West Division, stay tuned for the Steel Flyers podcast tomorrow that we're going to record with Delhi on the Western Division, and you can tell them a little bit about the specifics of that podcast, Steel, that they should stay tuned cool. for tomorrow. Yeah, man, what we do is we've been breaking down each division um, before the trade deadline. We've already done um, all the other divisions, uh, so we'll be uh, taking care of the West and we're going to have special guest, uh, Anthony Deli. He's the uh, writer for the L.A. Kings. We're also going to have the great Professor Joe. And our ducks, ducks. Oh, and, you, and, you, and for, you, for the Ducks, too. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, Deli for the Ducks and, and for the Kings, right? And you write for the Kings as well, right? Yeah, I didn't know Deli did to the Kings. I thought he just did the Ducks. Okay, I was right. My mistake, my mistake. All right, so we, we are going to have Deli on, though, when he does cover Anaheim, that's for sure. Um, he's he's definitely the expert uh, on the Anaheim Mighty Ducks, and uh, and and we'll we'll definitely get his uh, opinions on what he feels is going to happen, especially in the West. Um, seeing as how he's out there and lives out there, so we're going to check that out. Yeah. We're going to also have we're also going to have the uh, the great Perlo uh, is going to be hopping on, and he's going to give us his uh, kind of rendition too, as well, because he's out west and he pays attention to a lot of those teams out there as well too. And then we're going to have the great Professor Joe on, and he'll be doing uh, for uh, joining as well too, because he also writes for the Kings. I got that right, right? All three. Right? Yeah, you, do, you do for the Kings, and Delhi does for the Ducks, right? Yeah, I do yeah. a little bit of all three, but yeah, all right. Like I'll write some shark stuff, some duck stuff for OT, and okay. some King stuff. Yeah, that's okay. why I like talking about the West when I can, and usually I have late nights watching exactly. hockey because I try to watch uh, those teams. But um, yeah, that'll be a great episode tomorrow to stay tuned for. I remember Delhi. I think he said is a funny story before we move on. I think it was Comtois, who he lived very close to before he obviously got more money and moved out of his apartment. He could actually throw a rock at his door if he wanted to hit it. With a <laughs> but, um, I Dude, think that's man, the guy. Can't wait to talk stuff. to him, yeah. man. It's gonna be he great. Man. So it's gonna be great. To Great to catch up with him. But now we're getting into speaking of the Ducks, as Steele broke out the old school name, uh, the Mighty Ducks. Um, we uh, have Bob Murray and Dallas Aikens led Ducks team that right now is 9 17 and 6 with 24 points, a minus 39 goal differential. They're obviously still in the grow and uh, move forward with young guys mode. Um, speaking of Maxime Comtois, you obviously you have him uh, in the lineup there, another guy. But when it comes to their defensemen, you got Troy Terry, who I actually really like as a young guy. Uh, you got a lot of guys that are developed, Max Jones, but it's going to take time. Yeah, uh, that's kind of where they're at right now. Uh, when it comes to their defense, um, <clears throat> there's not a lot like we were talking about before the podcast you would trade for from the Ducks because unless if um, you want to take, maybe if you trade Ghost since uh, AV's fallen out of love with Ghost and the Ducks like Ghost is an offensive set and a guy that's come back now and has only played six games this year but is 
but is more defensive. Uh, he puts uh, together offense, but only one season of 30-something points. Other than that, he's been in the teens. Is Manson, who yeah. got picked sixth round. He's a righty if you want to get a right-hander, and it seems like A.V.'s falling out of love with Ghost. Maybe you could almost just trade Ghost and not much, and like a later round, middle round pick, and then that would be all it would take to maybe get a righty in Manson because he has four point one. I think Ghost has about a four point five or something like yeah. that pitch. So that would be a trade that could kind of work out if you want to get a right-handed defenseman that hasn't ever fully got where um, I think the Ducks thought once he. F- once they kind of developed him, but we also have to remember the dude got picked in the sixth round. So even though when he started blooming, he might have not hit where they wanted him to, right. he's still a great defenseman for getting picked in the sixth round, for putting together a career um, from starting all the way back in 14, 15 now to playing all the way up to now at the age of 29. So maybe a change of scenery for him will be good because he's had three very good seasons in this league and then has tailed off as the Ducks tailed off. So yeah. I think maybe a change of scenery will be good for Josh Manson. I don't know if you have any thoughts on him or if you have a, that's the player that I just pinpointed when it came to the yeah, Ducks. Cause I look at it's this not team. my favorite guy, but it's somebody I would go for if you pinpoint the Ducks. I don't know if you had another guy or if you had thoughts on him. You know, look, when we, I, I think we probably talked about this last year or during the off season or whatever the case was. And, I know this is going to sound really horrible, but, you know, I still think that Shattenkirk would be a great fit for the Flyers. Um, if I had to pick anybody on this team, if, if it would be a defenseman, it would be him. If not, maybe an, uh, uh, maybe a forward might be better off of this team. But I just don't know about defensemen coming from, from Anaheim. Um, I, I mean, I get what you're saying with uh, – uh, with Manson, you know what I mean? And and we even talked about maybe even uh, Hutton as well, too. You know what I mean? Where it's just one of those things where, you know, do you, do you take the chance? Is it going to be one of those things where do you feel mm-hmm. like you can take the chance on somebody from this team that's going to be maybe, you know what I mean, where it, I would much rather try to get somebody who's a little bit more of a, a – more of a – uh, better commodity yeah it's just with how manson the last three years stats have gone down a bit i feel like with how av has commented on ghosts production defensively um if you can get manson at his best uh with the way he can play the game at 6'3 225 uh he can play a very more defensive clear guys out of the front of the net at least if not consistent actually stick checking defense he can at least do the big body get guys out of the front that the flyers yeah have to yeah i'm with you on that but um, so i'm with I, you on that but i hold on hold on a second real, real quick i'm with you on that but i would much rather get rid of gustafson for that reason than get rid of ghost because i still think ghost has has played much better on the power play as far as being the quarterback and things of that nature. Look, I understand that AV is kind of grown out of favor with him, but when you look at it at the end of the day, I think he's more of a better player than, than Gustafson. And I agree. I, if, and if you're going to make that move and make that trade, I would much rather lose Gustafson than ghost. I agree. It's just, um, I've always been a big fan of ghost and argue with Rob every time we do the disciples of Ed podcast. Cause he doesn't like ghost. So Steve and I always come at him about that. But uh, regard, regardless, I think to, to balance it out, you would trade Ghost because Manson has his contract expires after next season for 4.1. Ghost has, I think, next season and the following season, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think he's just next season. Manson has this year and next year. Yeah, I think Ghost has after 2023. I thought he was a UFA. Maybe it's after next year, but I thought it was after 2023. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look that one up, but I'm I'm looking at Manson right well, now. I know Manson well, is I think Manson, in 2020. Yeah, it's more the cap balances out. Gus is just a one year three million. If you get Manson, you're saving uh like point three or whatever it is um still from the thing because it's four point one to four point five or four point four five, whatever Gus disparages. Yeah, That's what I feel like. 
that might be the trade that if they do it, that's a trade that people want to thinking of that could happen just because I don't think it would take a hell of a lot more than ghosts just because of both guys are kind of in this limbo period of their careers right now. Uh, ghost is, um, is a little Manson bit back yet? Cause he's still listed here as a, yeah. on the IR. Yeah. He also yeah. has a no movement clause though, too, or a no trade clause. He's been back for six games, but that's true. I think it's just if you have um, – I know the Flyers are a team that haven't been performing as well recently, but if you're kind of been on the Ducks and they're good and bad, because those three years he did good from 14-15 onward to like the 17-18 season, they were still a decent competitive team. Then they sort of fallen off the last three. His stats did. I feel like a change of scenery in Philly – uh, it's still a place that it seems like a lot of people want to play for due to our fan base and all that. That's something Hayes touted. That's something Niskanen touted when he came here. Yeah. Um, so I feel like he might be open to waving that when it comes to going to a okay. team that's more competitive than the Ducks. That would be the only thing that would be, the only thing that would be the, the hindrance, I would think. But I, I agree with you. I think that could be something that could get done. Um, but I would much rather lose Gustafson than Ghost, but I get it where Ghost is more of an attraction to Anaheim than than, than Gustafson is. So I get it, but... It's also pay. more of a balance for the cap. If you trade Gus, you're not balancing your next year's cap because he's not on next year's cap. Where Ghost would be, That's right. um, where Manson would also be on next year's cap. So it right. wouldn't and be it is only It is only point... Uh, Ghost is four point... Two seven five, I think five or something, or maybe he's only two seven five. I thought he was a little bit more than that, but it could be the. Okay, I think it's four point two seven five. I think is what it is. Well, if that's 4. the case, point three or something like that. Yeah, it's not that much. So I mean, it wouldn't really be. But I get you. It's All more right. though for the second point. I said I don't like. I love Ghost, but if you're going to get a Manson, I think you want to have somebody. That also okay. balances out the cap per year, where if you trade a Gus and they want that, you have now still Ghost who's on your cap next year for four point something. And then you just brought in Manson who's on your cap for four yeah, point something. You. So that gives you a lot less money to play with free agency wise yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or off season wise. That's that's the other that's the more bigger part I worry about rather than if you say point one five or point like 1.2.3, that's not as big of the concern for me compared to having too yeah, many guys in the cap for next year at defense. Yeah, that, that's more. Um, sure. But we can move in now. This team has a chance to be the second coming of the Calgary Flames um, that I did in my Scotia North division, but let's see if we can find anybody here. As we move to the seventh seed in the Honda West division, the San Jose Sharks as we enter into the Shark Tank to see uh, who we could team. potentially get on there. Well, I think that's what uh, Nikoli Kuznov and uh, Mario Ferraro are trying to figure out, considering they're both 23 and 22 year old rookies and um, both have probably been their most consistent defensive defensemen. And one is undrafted, by the way, as a 23 year old rookie in Kuznov. So uh, yeah, they need to have other guys. Well, Vlasic, I can't blame because Vlasic has been so good his entire career and um, obviously is now at the age of 33 on a very downtrodden defense uh, and has been in the league for years. So I'm not going to put any blame on him. He's just at a point of his career where you need to have him in a more cushioned defense and you have him in a defense that has two rookies playing as your best defensive player. So I don't yes. think this team... For me, I don't know if you have anybody, but for me, has anybody you're going to be able to acquire that would help your team? Because they're not trading the undrafted guy, Kuzinov, I don't think, because he's developing pretty well. If you want to try to get him, go for it. But he's another lefty, too. So that's bringing in another young lefty. The only way I would make that exception is if the Flyers just went balls to the wall and went, how much is it going to take to get Mario Ferraro? And then you could say okay, I don't care if we have another lefty because Mario Ferraro looks like he can play on both ends very well and almost be a miniature Ivan Provorov uh, as he keeps developing. Like Almost like he, he has a chance to be like Kimo Timonen because he's actually 5'11", and he actually is a guy you can compare that seems like he could be that good. 
like where he's 5'11", can get the puck through most of the time he tries to shoot it. Uh, he has 10 points uh, this year in 29 games. Um, last year he had 11 points in 61 or contributes some on offense, but is more of a guy that just does the little things you'd like to see out there on the ice. That pretty much was Kimo Tiemann, and he'll contribute on offense, but does all the little things you want to see and plays a good defensive game. That seems like what the kid would develop into, but he's a dreamboat scenario trade, I think. Yeah. I don't think you're going to be able to get him. So this team is a wash for me, I think, with that being said. Um, uh, I don't think there's guys, unless if you think there's a guy you want to get um, or agree with me that the only two guys would be the rookies if you could somehow get them from the Sharks. But Yeah, because I was looking at, I was looking at uh, Christian Jaros, and I just – yeah, no, really. <laughs> um, yeah, really, it doesn't seem like there's, uh, except for the, the the players that you were speaking of, Ferraro, Ferraro, and uh, and Kuznetsov or whatever. Um, yeah, the, there's just nothing really here that, and and Carlson has already come out and said that he doesn't want to be part of a rebuild. And with that salary that he's got hanging over him, he's. Uh, I don't see. Anybody really? I guess one, swooping in yeah. to pick him up. One wild card guy might be. I think the Flyers want to get guys that are more proven. But this year, Nicholas Meloche, who was picked in the second round of 2015 by the uh, Avalanche, who's now on the Sharks, in five games played pretty well. He put up one point uh, for the Barracuda. Uh, he's looked solid in the game yeah. I've watched on yeah. NHL TV. He's been actually more consistent in the five games in the NHL, oddly enough, um, than he's been in some of the games in the uh, AHL this year. But last year, he was very good defensively in the AHL um, and also is a guy that's not going to back down from anyone um, playing 41 games for the Barracuda. So. Um, if you want to go for someone that you think you can make into a more of a defensive right-hander, since we obviously have Myers, who you tried to convert to more defensive when he was more running gun when he first hit the minors, Maloche's more of a guy that plays at 6'3", over 200, a defensive game. Yeah, as yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe if you want to go there, you could go there. Uh, he kind of looks like maybe the next coming up, like what Broad was in his prime. Um, pretty much like how when Vlasic and Braun were together or whatever line they put together in San Jose during those golden days of their team, um, that that's when Braun was his best because he matched well. Maloche's quicker on his a little bit quicker on his skates, but uses his body well. He would be a wild card guy that wouldn't take much to get, but then you're not bringing in a proven commodity. You're bringing in someone you think is a young guy can yeah. bring energy to the team and fit in well, rather than having an older guy like Braun consistently in there and guys like Gus, that's all that would be doing where I feel yeah. like the flyers want to bring in more proven commodities unless yes. it's getting like a Mario Ferraro. When you know, even though he's 22, he already looks like he's just a ridiculous talent. I agree. You know, if I could have my druthers, man, can we have Curtis Gabriel back? <laughs> yeah, that's a guy I was actually going to think of bringing up when I did the forwards one, but we'll keep that because uh, I'm going to finish this uh, defense. Oops, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, with looking at the uh, with looking at the uh, East Division uh, mm. later today because I think the only two teams in our own division that would trade us guys are the Devils and Sabers. I don't think anyone else is going to try to uh, help you out just because there's no need for them to. Um, but we'll get to that later. As we now have, though, did you have anyone else you wanted to mention with the Sharks? Or No, just, just what you've already mentioned and the fact that, you know what, these guys may or may not be having guys on the block. You know what I mean? And and some of the guys that they may have on the block might be too expensive for, for the Flyers. So it might not be, you know what I mean, it might not be something that's doable that the Flyers are going to be able to do. And it's all going to depend on who who they're going to be putting up on the block if they put anybody up on the block. Yeah, and the other side of Maloche is he got drafted by the Avs. So the reason I threw him in there is he seems like a pretty solid defensive right-hander and got drafted by a team that sure as heck knows how to develop defense. Yeah, exactly. And then they decided their defense is stacked, so let's move him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. And, and I'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll be okay with that, yeah. Um. 
But a quick update before we move forward. Uh, a good article, check it out, by Jamie Baskow. He always does great stuff for Fly and Nitty Gritty. He said Sean Couturier is going to be a game-time decision for tonight's game. So better news than expected for cool. the Flyers. So hopefully yeah. uh, that keeps trending in That's the awesome. right direction. From, you know, um, it's funny that you mention him. It's funny that you mentioned him because he posted something earlier that said that the MRI stated that it was um, an injury that he had had in the past, but that they were going to be able to move on from it, and he was skating. And I think that was either earlier today that I think Jamie posted that on Twitter, something like that. Yeah, which, yeah. So which that, that gave me that gave me um, positive vibes on that for sure. You know, it's good to see that he's, you know, trending towards coming back. So that's always good. Yeah, that's very good to see. Um, the The next team we're going to skip over for now just because we're saved the best for last. I think the Coyotes team has the most defensemen that have been rumored all over the place. So uh, we're diving to them uh, last. And we're going to L.A., who I don't think is going to be moving too many guys just because they're still really on the bubble. Yeah. Plus four differential to St. Louis is minus three at 32 points to 37, uh, I think they have a better chance just the way they played a better, well-rounded game than Arizona. Two, if anybody can surpass St. Louis to get the four spot, I feel like it would be them. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be interesting what they do. Um, when it comes to them, I don't think they have. The big reason why this team for me is a wash is I don't think they have any defensemen they want to move. I mean, the Flyers aren't going to pay Drew Doughty $11 million. Um, he is a good right-handed defenseman, but they're not going to pay him $11 million in 2026-27. Oh, Imada is left-handed and has been the most inconsistent defenseman on the Kings this year. Sean Walker, they ain't trading. Uh, Mikey Anderson, they love. He's left-handed, but he plays with Doughty. They've been limiting goals. One of the better lines at limiting goals this year. Uh, Tobias Bjornfurt, if you can get him as a young guy, great. But uh, he's another lefty you want to yeah, seems like. Be, yeah. uh, you know, so I think this team is just a watch because they like their defense. I don't think they're looking to move anybody. And it's not like they have any veterans at the bottom of the roster that you're going to go, okay, well, let me pick up this guy. Um, that you can uh, bring back or anything like that. So, I, yeah, I think this team is just a wash because they even got Sean Dursey who's developing. So he's a righty, but then you're, I don't know if he's – that they got from Toronto, he might just not be up because of how loaded uh, when at their best the Kings defense is. But I think it's also partially because they're still working out some kinks in his game. So you would still have to wait for him to develop if you get him – um, or an Austin Strand, who's a right D. And then obviously you're not going to bring back Mark Holt, I don't think, because uh, he's more of a uh, seventh or eighth defenseman. So I don't know if you agree, but I think we could probably move on to if we think St. Louis will trade people, because I think this team's just a wash because they're still competitive and have no defensemen I think they're going to want to move on from, other than maybe Oli Mata, who I don't think the Flyers would want. At that price tag for another two years, maybe. But here's the thing. Um, L.A. has got a lot of cap space, and they've got a lot of their players are up for needing to be re-signed for next year. So you, you, this team might surprise us. I think that they might be looking for a goalie or something. You know what I mean? And they might, they might surprise and come out, and they might be willing to put – some guys on the block that might be affordable for the Flyers. But, you know, I'm with you on this, man. It's going to be hard. It's it's slim pickings here. Yeah, I mean, personally, I don't think LA needs to look for a goalie because I honestly think quick. I'm just saying uh, if they do or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, like Pedersen's been great, and I think quick stats are deceiving because save percentage is uh, more team-oriented than it can be to actually how well the guy's playing. He's looked – much better since the start of the season. And I think sometimes uh, the Kings, for whatever reason, leave him out to dry a little bit more than okay. they leave Patterson at this point. But it is what it is. I feel like he's doing what Elliott did last year where he didn't have the sexiest numbers, but he makes all the saves he has okay, to make. Yeah, okay. to the season. Yeah, like that type of thing, basically, okay. like what you saw from Elliott. Yeah, 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 Pretty much you. that's what I think he's kind of okay. doing. You know, but, here's the other thing, too, the other thing too about this defense. 
they got a 26 year old, a 26 year old, a 19 year old, a 21 year old, a 26 year old, a 26 year old, and then they got Drew Dowdy, who's 31. So you're right. There's probably there's probably the slim pickings here because these guys are all relatively young for the most part. You know what I mean? And starting to come into their own, starting to play well, starting to get together as a team. So I don't think they're going to be moving any of these guys. No, um, I don't think they will. And the Kings usually take the long process with them trying to develop their defensemen. Usually they don't look to move them. So uh, other than maybe Mata, who they brought in to try to turn around and he's been inconsistent, but that's yeah. a little bit of a different story. And I don't think the Flyers getting on. He can clear people out of the front of the net pretty well. It's not like he would be a terrible option. It's just you're not going to protect him if you get him. And right. if he goes, you better not trade anything too significant for his second year. Exactly. Because it's not like he's <laughs> that consistent of a defenseman. It's not like you're trading for an Ekholm who has a second year. You're trading for Oli So right, exactly. you better do it right if you do acquire That's him. But before we go to the great cream of the crop team, uh, which is those Arizona Coyotes, uh, we will see if we believe the St. Louis Blues being they're still in the playoff race right now at a minus three goal differential, churning in the right direction. They seem like they can sometimes, maybe with Barube, they're going to be that team that really gets it going, uh, fire sale, and in the second half in terms of their consistent play. So, um I'll let you go first on the Blues. What do you think when it comes to the St. Louis Blues? Do you think there's anybody on their defense that they're looking to move or they're kind of similar to the Kings where they're probably not going to look to move anybody on their defense unless if you look for maybe a young guy that yeah, we mentioned from some of the up teams like the Maloches of the world that we mentioned from San Jose's organization or somebody uh, Kuzanoff from San Jose's organization, somebody like that. Yeah, 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 that's that's really the only thing I could think of. There's nobody really. I don't think they're going to be moving anybody. They, they, they brought Tory Krug in from from uh, from Boston uh, to 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 help them out here. You know what I mean? And and I just I, I don't I just don't think there's going to be anybody here. I don't think St. Louis. I, I think they're going to be looking to get their guys back. And, and trying to get their guys more to, to be healthy and, and gel and come together. And I just don't see anybody on this team that, I mean, I just really don't see anybody on here that, because Colton, to, Colton uh, Perieko, did I say his name right? Perieko, yeah. Perieko, yeah. He's, he's carrying 5.5 for the next two years. He's 27, but he's yeah. a right-hand defenseman. See what I'm saying? So I... Yeah, I don't know. I would take with Pareko, I would take him just because I think at the six six size he is, if you could fit that into the cap and figure it out, he is that guy that also provides Which is why he, he was the only name that popped out at me, right. Yeah. Like he ev- provides assist numbers, bashes people in front of the net. Sometimes we'll take those stupid penalties, but he is a guy that'll not often though. So he's yeah. a guy that'll clear guys out of the front really well, block shots. And he's only 27. Yeah, he's only 27. He'll be that bruiser. He had a great playoff uh, in their Stanley Cup run. So I think um, he's a guy that I would look to. You would just have to figure it out who you're moving. I think Ghost would also, if they won him, or somebody would have to be a forward then, if not Ghost, with a decent cap hit, would have to be in that because the Flyers only have six-something in flat cap. And Colton Paranko himself, like oh. we said, is 5.5. Oh. Okay, here's going to be the thing, though, too, with with St. With St. Louis. They they have uh, guys that are going to be need to be re-signed for them next year. Uh, you know, quite a few of them are going to be, you know, UFAs. Uh, Schwartz, uh, Bozak, and Huffman are both going to be UFAs. You're also looking at uh, Sanford, Zachary is going to be an RFA. And, and, and uh, you know what I mean? So the... And and with their limited amount of money that they have, it, it eh, I don't know. I yeah. think that, I think the only player that we could really even potentially is to see if we could get uh, Perieko or whatever. But that would be it. You know, that's really the only thing I could think of for this. I've team. always liked uh, Dunn too, but they started using him a lot more again. He's again a righty or a lefty. Excuse lefty, me. Yeah. But, um, he's always played a game that I've liked him developing. Uh, he's been a little bit 
more inconsistent this year, but everybody who has their in their young career, like how we see with Sam, <laughs> uh, have <laughs> inconsistent yeah. years. He's just a guy I've always liked, uh, but I feel like with the way the Flyers are trending at season's beginning, like when I was saying I want it done, I thought our defense was going to be trending a different direction and not in this absolute crap storm that it's in right now. So, Boy, that was being nice. I feel like uh, Vince Dunn isn't the most seam fit like for okay. what your scheme's going to be. Yeah, I agree. Um, with the Flyers. That's why I wouldn't go for him as much. Um, where the only other guy that you might look for just because it's not like he's in their lineup every day to try to get on the cheap, maybe is Robert Bertuzzo, since he is a right-handed defenseman that uh, is pretty much the bruiser that blocks shots and hits people out of the front of the net. He's almost like a better version of a uh, more consistent version of Gabranson, where like he's just able to hit people out of the front of the net and do the similar things. Has actually been in playoff stretches though. He played seventeen games uh, in the eighteen nineteen uh, run, and yeah. then played ten games in sixteen seventeen. So he's been in some important moments for the exactly, exactly. He, yeah. you know, I, 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 I picked Perry Echo because I knew you would pick. Uh, uh, Bertruz, Bertruz row. And, and I knew you would pick him. That's why I went with the other one because I knew you would pick him. So, <laughs> as as a player that we would both maybe look at and go, yeah, this would be somebody that we would consider to to bring on. So, yeah, I mean, he had that playoff experience, and you want to yeah. bring that pedigree, which he's been in. Um, let's see here, uh, fifteen over 43 playoff games uh, at 43, actually, exactly, with the St. Louis yeah. Blues. So, and, and he's uh, 1.3 mil for, for this year and next, so that's cheap. 30-something with the Blues since eight was with Pittsburgh. So, like, he has a lot of playoff experience. Um, I think, yeah, bringing him in, it's a cheapy deal. I think he might be a guy you would look to uh, just to kind of fill the card out and um, be that more consistent guy rather than consistently put him brawn in. And he's not a guy like we talked about with yesterday with some guys in the Discover Central, like the Bennings of the world. If you yeah. claim them and they get and you trade them, you're not trading your best assets for them. So if Seattle decided to pick them, you're not going, oh, my God. Where yeah, if you claim Eckholm and they took Eckholm, you would be like, well, this is just terrible. Yeah, so, right? That um, didn't work well so for us. <laughs> yeah, but... As okay. we're now hitting the Golden Boy team, which is of the team that has the rumors swirling around their defense. Um, finally, though, oddly enough, um, in a year that their defense rumors are swirling, there's not as much rumors about OEL. It's funny how that works. Um, but the um, Arizona Coyotes have many rumors with other defensemen that are not named Oliver ekman Larson. Um they're led by Rick Tockett in the last year of his contract. Billy Armstrong is now the GM of that team. Um, they are a team that's been competing this year like you would expect in games. They're just not getting over the hump because obviously their offense is not consistent. Um, so that's the big issue. They have a good first line. They have guys like Dvorak and Kessel performing fairly well. I like what Broussard's done for them and Pitlick, but other than that, they're not having the most consistent guys. Guys are still developing. They're waiting for them to develop all that and so forth. But when it comes to trading with this team, obviously we've heard the rumors of Nicholas Jomerson. Um, we heard the rumors of Alex Goligoski, and then we heard the rumors of Jason Demers as well. Um, Goligoski has been pretty solid through 31. He's not going to put up points much for you anymore at this point of his career. He's more of a guy that just plays solid defense and gets the puck out of his zone well, like Pirlo told us earlier. But in 31 games, he's been pretty consistent. Jomerson in 28 games has been pretty consistent. Um, I'll let you um, start with this one again. I'm assuming it's going to be Nicholas Jomerson, but uh, who's your uh, go-to guy on this team? Yeah, let me say this too about um, Arizona too. They've had, you know, their their uh, their number one goalie is also out. You know what I mean? And they've had a lot of turmoil happen in this team over the last two seasons. And with this being the last year of Tockett's contract, 
if if he's not re-signed, then then I think there's going to be a lot of things that's going to happen to this team. You know what I mean? It just kind of feels like that. So it seems like maybe some of these players on here. I, I'm with you on this. I I really like uh, Nicholas Yalmerson to I as as looking at him and going, okay, yeah, I know he's got a five million dollar hit, but it's only a third of that that we're going to have to end up paying for this year. And then he's a UFA. So that means he has to be re-signed. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that means he has an expiring contract, which could potentially help the Flyers because if he has an expiring contract, that means he's unsigned. That mean, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's somebody that um, Seattle would be looking to get, although – Yalmerson might be enough talent wise that they might select him as well. But if you look at some of the other guys that might be available uh, as defensively, well, I think he's an unrestricted free agent. They would have to sign him. They couldn't. Right. Select him. Anyway, right. where I was, where my whole thinking with that is Jomerson, I think is still at this point of his career with how he plays a good, consistent defensive game. Probably going to ask for still 4.5 to 5 on a one-year-at-a-time deal, or if you want to give him two years uh, or something like that, since he's um, 33 now, he'd be 35 or going on 36 once you give him a two-year. Um, right, I think right. he's a guy that's still in that realm, so I feel like Seattle wouldn't want to pay one of their initial free agent signees like $5 million for a guy in his 30s where they would rather – kind of do it a little bit different there and uh, save some money rather than exactly. committing to something like and, that. And That's why I think it's safe. Especially with the ownership up there in Seattle. You know what I mean? They're going to be looking to bring in some guys that's going to help the team right away and, and not be looking to bring on a lot of contract. And this guy is going to command a contract, especially if he's an un, unrestricted free agent. He's going to need to be signed. And I agree. He's going to be looking for that five mil or whatever, you know, because he he is a, he is that good. And and I do like some of the other names that you mentioned as far as Demir's are, are concerned. I know that um, also um, Goligoski has also been mentioned as well, too. I just feel that Yalmerson brings that little bit extra. He's got cups. He's got that little bit of it more of experience. I feel that he would also be that perfect Niskanen replacement where he would calm everything down and slow the defensive down and get everybody on the same page. And you know what I mean? I think he'll be able to fill those roles that Niskanen kind of took with him when he retired. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I think Jomerson, I mean, he's still been a good defenseman. Uh since going to Arizona, his uh, bread and, and butter still years were obviously and playing well. Still, yeah, his bread and butter years were obviously in Chicago, where he won those three Stanley Cups. But I think he's a guy that's looking. Probably, he's he's not a guy that comes out and says it. He just doesn't seem like one of those individuals. But I'm sure inside, he's probably looking uh, secretly for a change of scenery. And I feel like uh, if you get him, he's the exact thing. Yes, he's another lefty. But he's the exact thing you need. He's one of the most consistent left handers in the league for years on end now. Kind of like how Muzzin has been an un, an underrated defenseman for a while. Jomerson's been a guy that's won three cups and still doesn't even get talked about enough sometimes. So that just goes to show uh, how people value the sexy Cal McCarr type defender. And nobody pays attention to the Ryan Lingrens of the world, the Nicholas Jomersons of the world the you know, until yeah, the guys that clear the porch out and actually play defense yeah, Carolina just started uh, doing those crazy <laughs> stuff which is have Brindy nobody paid attention to slave and yeah. um, so it's funny <laughs> people pay attention to defensemen that actually play like defensemen now Cal McCarr does both don't get me wrong oh yeah 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 like Quinn Hughes is not doesn't have very good defensive grades I love Quinn Hughes but you got to give people credit where it's due. And Jomerson sticking in a league as a defensive, Agreed. consistent brute yeah. force uh, of a fourth round pick he worked his way up from, too, to become this. Uh, that deserves a lot of uh, credit. Where I give Quinn Hughes, obviously, his credit because he's an offensive mastermind, but he's in a different capacity. Yeah, you yeah, want different, yeah, 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 I, I agree. That's apples and oranges. Yeah, you know, it's funny that. <laughs> it's it's funny that you know uh, the, the writer extraordinaire Lance Green uh, wrote an article about the exact perfect fit that Yalmerson would bring to the Flyers. 
um, a couple of weeks ago, and it was posted on FlyersNittyGritty.com. We also did a show about it on the Hockey Writers Inc. about Yalmerson coming to the Flyers. So I'm definitely going to be going. I'm I'm rooting for this player to come. But see, I also feel that the Flyers need more than just one player. They they need they need that defenseman that's going to be that calming force. But I also feel that they need a, a forward that's going to be able to drop the gloves, bang bodies, and do those kinds of things as well, too. Yeah, yeah, unless if a, a guy like Tanner, or not Tanner, um, Tanner Lezinski's not going to come up and do exactly that. Carson Trewinski um, continues Good. to kind of look like a hitter and uh, yeah. fight some guys in your lineup. Or Lindblom wants to all of a sudden fight everybody. Uh, yeah, right, and, what's up with that? And, Wait, um, what? <laughs> well, uh, that's yeah. why I agree with that, that. That annoyed me last game, that he fought people and we still didn't have a response. TK brought that up. But that's a conversation for a different video. I talk about that right. in my pre video for the game but I think when it comes to this team when it comes to Jomerson he's my top dog where it was at home like I mentioned in past videos until I realized that would kind of screw the Flyers for expansion so right. now that I realize that Jomerson with his three cups uh being that great consistent defensive defenseman that kind of sets men's the fort I think he's a guy that will do that really well. You compared him to Niski, yeah. I think he's definitely like that. I feel like he brings more to the even upper effect of how much Muzzin settled down Toronto's defense. Yeah. I feel like Jomerson's more at that level oh, with the Niskanen. Yeah, the yeah, guy yeah. I would compare to Niskanen more would actually be Goligoski because he's older in his mid-30s now rather than like still early. Like at 33, he's going on 36, uh, Alex Goligoski. And he basically is a guy you bring in where Niskanen, if you looked at his surface numbers, looked like he was trending down, but then when you looked at his inner numbers, was still playing a good game. That's pretty much what Goligoski is. So if he he's one of those guys you can bring in going, this is a solid signing that I think is going to fit in well, and then go, wow, this guy meant a lot more to the team than I thought he was going to do, which is I think what a lot of Flyers fans had as a final conclusion about Matt Niskanen. I don't think they saw him having as big of an impact last year as he did, I don't think um, clearly. Yeah, I don't think in last season how well Goligoski did. The Coyotes saw him having as big of an impact. That was one of his better seasons. So I feel this year still being solid, picking up him would be decent. And then Demirs, I'm all right with. I'm still indifferent about Demirs, but my one friend Zach convinced me a little bit, saying he's just been a good, consistent right-handed defenseman. Yes, he can get trapped in his own zone a bit, like Pirlo, the great Pirlo wisdom brought up to us earlier, but not. That often when he's paired with the right guys. That's why I feel like Sandheim and Demir yeah. yeah, might yeah. work out fairly that, well. Oh, yeah, that's if, a good point. If you move him with Provy because yeah. you're going to have Provy be able to consistently get the puck up. Provy's working well with Braun. Demir's is a younger version, kind of what Braun was a couple years ago, and not that's how he's yeah. slowing up now. He still has the wits but just can't get to the spot in Justin Braun. Demir's isn't obviously a fleet of foot guy but can still get to those spots and is a very smart player in himself. And all you have him for is this year. So you're not right. locking yourself up at all. That's why I have interest in him. If he had the following year, like Braun, I wouldn't want to trade for him as much. But being he has the one year, he's right-handed, I would give him a shot. And then a wild card guy is Ilya Labushkin, their undrafted guy that they've developed since he is a 6'2 net clearer, only gets paid a million bucks. If so, if you don't hit it with him, only. you're not trading, you're not going to trade a crap ton for him, probably like a mid round pick, even maybe then that's it. And then he's only getting paid a million. You're not kicking yourself too hard if you trade a fourth or a fifth for a guy. Exactly. That exactly. Do. But I feel like if you bring him in, he might work out fairly well as one of those wild card guys, like how we brought up the Bennings of the world that not as many people are thinking about, just because he, since coming over, has played a consistent game. But what you have to tout with him is more his KHL time, where he was a very consistent defensive defenseman in 16, 17, and 17, 18, especially in the KHL, as well as in the first yeah. So I think if he can do that over there, show that he has some promise here as a defensive uh, defenseman, he's a guy you might want to have on your radar a bit. I just don't know if he's proven enough yet for the Flyers to really want to go after him if they're trying to make it this year and not just kind of 
make the roster better for now and the future. So. Right, right, right. No, no, no. I'm with you on that 100%, man. I agree with everything that you said. I, I couldn't even have said it better. And I like those combinations on the line that you had as well, too, with with Demir's. Um, that here's the thing though, and 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 this is something that we've talked about and, and on and off and you know the whole nine yards. There's there's more than one thing that needs to happen for this team. Okay. And so that's gonna complicate things no matter how you slice it, because that's gonna limit the team and either the amount of money that they're gonna be able to spend for a forward. Or the amount of money that they're going to be able to spend for a D-man. Right now, clearly, defense is more of an important um, issue for right. the Flyers right now. You know what I'm saying? So they're obviously going to be spending more of their money on defense, whereas I still think they're going to need somebody uh, in the forward end that's going to be able to be that 3C and or whatever the case is going to have to be. You're going to need that other person. So I, I think with everything that we talked about here, I think the Flyers – they have a little bit of wiggle room, but they are kind of in a conundrum. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the guys we mentioned, other than if we trade for Paranko, don't yeah. leave us a good amount of wiggle room to trade for a $1 million, $1.5, $2 million forward that kind of does the good draw S stuff of the world or whatever. Or if you're just going to trade to line up the center core a bit better and maybe let Patrick play the wing since he hasn't been playing center as well and you get a Broussard of the world or somebody like that. But that's something we'll leave uh, when we get to our forward video. We do thank you all for joining us, though, for this video as we talk to you about the Philadelphia Flyers defense trade targets they could possibly get from the Honda West division, uh, yep. brought to you by Honda this year as the divisions are all brought to you. Um, you got the Scotia North and the Discover Central we did already. We hope you all enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow Steel at SteelFlyers52 on the Great World of Twitter and me at JJBora26 on the Great World of Twitter. And check out SteelFlyers.com for all the wonderful content on there, podcasts, blogs, um, and it's still coming to you. We're still obviously making the site better and bit better and stronger each day for you all. And obviously check out Pirlo Wisdom off the Oaxaki, Payton on the radio, and Flyers Nitty Gritty channels on YouTube as well as Steel Flyers channel as well. Um, again, Steel, I thank you for joining. I don't know if you have any closing remarks you want to uh, give no, to people. Um, check out the, uh, yeah, yeah, check out the, uh, we'll, we'll be doing uh, the, um, the West uh, Division um, Trade Deadline Show. We'll be putting that together with uh, the great, um, Professor Joe, the great Perloism, and also the great uh, Delhi, uh, to talk about all things West trade deadline and and all the teams going through that. So I'll uh, be looking for that coming out here real soon. We got um, obviously the Sports Fanatic News Show coming out here soon, and then um, lots of great stuff coming out. So yeah, man, hit the like and subscribe. Thank you all very much. Yep, trying to hit 125 by the end of the week at 21, 121 now. I really appreciate all your support. As Patrick Starr would say, um, we cover the Honda Weast division today, and we'll be uh, doing a uh, another video on the Weast division on Steel Flyers tomorrow. I thank you all for joining. For Sports for Nag News, I am Pro Joe with Steel Flyers. Have a great, safe, and pleasant week, everybody, and enjoy all the great hockey action. Peace out.